The American Institute of Stress says that 75 to 90 percent of all visits to a primary care physician's office are stress disorders. Stress related. Stress related. It's all related. related to stress. In other words, realize that about 75 to 90 percent of people going to the doctor would probably not have to go if they would learn to sit at Jesus' feet. Yes. Just get in His rhythm and put their mind on Him and their words and speech on Him and start speaking the Word instead of speaking their problem. We need to simply stop speaking our fears and start prophesying what the Word of God says about us. So glad that you can join me at the beach house today. I'm Jerry and Kelly is not here at the beach house, but she's at her house zooming in. Hey, Kelly. Hey, I'm so glad to be connected to the beach house. I'm more like you are at home because I'm at home in my living room and I have my, we're Emily and I, come here, baby. We're in uh, quarantine. Hi, Emily. A couple of weeks of quarantine. But Hi. We were, uh, she had a light exposure, but you know, we're doing the thing that, that you're supposed to do. So we're not stressed. We've already got a week of school behind us and she did a great job. Was Good. I stressful well, as a teacher? No, but the first few, like when we first did this, she yes. was a little stressful, but no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you for anyway, your honesty, Emily. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Emily. Get out of here. Uh, what? We don't need any more honesty <laughs> in the house. Funny. Okay, say goodbye. Bye. All right, Bye. see you later. Well, okay, I'm glad you get later. to join us from your house. I like your little... Me too. You, you've got beach attire on. That's cute. Looks cute on you. I put my tropical shirt on. I was my makeup artist and my lighting person and my camera person. So when... But it's real life happening here if the dog barks, the doorbell rings. Hey, it's real life. It's just like your house. Yep. So well, uh, get I'm out of glad, here, Emily. I'm glad you get to join us with Zoom. We have an awesome show today. But I want to ask you, viewer, are you stressed out? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you overstressed? Because you know what? You can get to the place where stress is actually killing you that there's diseases happening in your body when you begin to get so stressed out. And the sad thing is that a lot of people walk around every day of their lives living like that when they don't have to live like that. So we have an expert with us today. I'm thrilled that he's here. Kelly, I'm sorry you're not here on the set in the beach house, but you're there and you can join in with us. We have Dr. Don Colbert, and he's going to be talking to us about his book, Stress Less. I think we all need that. Do you agree, Kelly? I do. And, you know, he's not only a gifted medical doctor, he's full of wisdom from his study, but he's also a minister and he has the wisdom of the Lord for us too. And, you know, I know that he has uh, found some, some secrets and he is helping people overcome the battle of stress. Yes. So, so we're excited to hear from you today. Welcome Dr. Colbert for being here. Well, thank you. It's great being here. We're glad you came back to the beach house. Yes, it's great. Being yeah. Here. We want to get into stress for less. And I know Kelly had something happen in her life and she, I guess I wasn't there. So you go ahead and talk about it, Kelly. Well, um, I've had been dealing with in my body psoriasis for a couple of years now and believing God I am healed. And I'm, I ask y'all's agreement with me on that. But Dr. Colbert, I know that you dealt with psoriasis and I started, I didn't even know what it was. It was in a very high time of stress and it was over a year before I realized what it, what was going on in my body, but stress hurts. And, uh, you, you dealt with that. Can you tell us your story and tell us what, how God led you to be relieved of stress? Well, absolutely. And that's part of my testimony. And I've written this in my book, Let Your Food Be Your Medicine, mm -hmm. because I had psoriasis in, um, in the early 90s and I was covered with psoriasis. Really? And it was terrible and itching. It's wow. like the seven year itch that never ends. Mm. 
and just this red, itchy, raised rash, and it was all over my, especially on my arms and on my legs. Wow. And it just, nothing helped it. I went to the dermatologist, nothing helped it. Finally, I had, I had a that's it moment. I said, that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm done with this. Now, what I did is I sought the Lord, but he gave me an insatiable desire to learn nutrition uh, as to the causes of my psoriasis. Mm -hmm. He gave, he put this burning desire in my heart. And so literally I went to seminar after seminar, studying to every kind of different doctor. And I finally discovered that my body had developed a food sensitivity. Now it just so happened, and plus I'd been under tremendous stress and stress I think opened the door because psoriasis is an autoimmune disease, but many times stress is what sets the stage for many autoimmune diseases. Right. But what I found was the very foods I was craving and eating every day at every meal was fueling the psoriasis. Mm. And for me, now it's different for other people, but for me, those foods that were inflaming my body and inviting psoriasis in were very simple. Wheat or gluten. I was eating gluten every meal. Mm. Number two were tomatoes and peppers, nightshades, also potatoes, eggplant, paprika, these are your nightshade plants. Well, I was eating those every day because I love salsa. Right. And like I said before, the flesh is dumb. It usually craves the very foods that fuel the disease. Well, then also I, I had to lay those foods on the altar for a season, mm -hmm. not forever, for a season. And then I also had to heal my gut. Now you say, what do you mean heal your gut? I had to overcome the stress. I had to start, I had to... Uh, control the stress by not working so much. I became a human doing. I was working day and night on stress call. Stress is killing people. It's a killer. It's yes. a huge killer. I had to heal my gut, which that's a whole other book. And that book comes out next year, mm. uh, The Gut Zone. <laughs> okay. Wow. But anyway, what to make a long story short, I healed the gut. I laid these foods on the altar for a season and I controlled the stress and I went into that deep sleep. And within a few months, psoriasis was gone. Now that's almost... Uh, 25, 30 years ago. Mm. Now I don't have any psoriasis, but I had to follow certain principles to do that. And we mm. have, with autoimmune disease, diseases, I talk about that in my upcoming book, The Gut Zone. Well, educating yourself right. on that and then being cautious and aware of what you're putting in your body is huge. Exactly, but the key thing that started it was stress. And the one thing I had to do, I had to get in God's rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I was a human doing. I, I literally, I was seeing lots of patients. I was on call almost every night and I burnt my you system You were just going, out. going, going. Exactly. And I yeah. developed what we call adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. My adrenals were exhausted. I had to reboot my adrenal glands, which is another very important hormone. I'll talk about in my book, The Hormone Zone. But what happened, the key thing that really helped me is I had to learn how to get into God's rhythm. Mm -hmm. And God has a rhythm. And God never gets in a hurry. Right. And I was always in a hurry. I was running from room to room. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got into His rhythm that I overcame that disease completely. Uh -huh. And so that's one thing real important. I tell so many people, they're in Martha's, you, you know, Martha and Mary in the Bible. Yes. Well, Martha was the worry wart. She was the hand wringer. And she was the one that worried and uh, questioned Jesus. And Mary was the one that sat at Jesus's feet. Mm -hmm. So back then I was more like a Martha and I had to become like a Mary yes. and learn to sit at his feet and sit at his, in his presence. So, Kelly and I've talked about Mary and Martha syndrome on the show before. Well, I'm going to just read real quick Luke 11 and verse 40. Remember Jesus and his 12 disciples went to Martha and Mary's house and yes. Lazarus. And it says that Martha was, it says that Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She was listening to Jesus' word. But now here's Martha. But Martha was distracted with much serving, much doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care? Now, let me stop you there. Do, not, do you not care? Well, he, he teaches us to cast all oh, our care. cares on him. And um, I remember Brother Kenneth telling me years ago, he says, when people say, take care, he says, no, I cast that on Jesus many exactly. years ago. Yes. But again, this was Martha, full of cares, Karen. And so what she is distracted with much serving says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her, now ordering Jesus, therefore, tell her to help me. 
Now listen to what Jesus says. Can you imagine her telling, telling Jesus, Jesus what to do? Yeah. I was thinking that's a Martha, Martha attitude and that's a Martha, Martha look. Now I can imagine Martha is a hand wringer. She is wringing her hands. You've seen those hand oh, wringers. Yeah. They're worried, worried people. Yes. They have that furred brow. That's why uh, doctors are making a killing on Botox. Because yes. those fur, they call them number 11s. 11, they get those furred brow, mm -hmm. that anxious look. You can hear it in the voice. They get that shrill little anxious voice. I have voice. the 11s because I have six children. Oh, well, now that'll do it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And so here's what Jesus says. I love his answer. And he said, uh, he said to Martha, 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 and I can hear his nice, loving, kind, gentle voice. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Now listen to how the New Living Translation says it, because it really puts a lot of great meaning into it. And so this is what Jesus says, Martha, Martha, there's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mm. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. That's so, so good. So again, can you imagine, here you have a choice of serving Jesus and all the 12 disciples or sitting at Jesus' feet. And here Mary discovered it. Now again, if, if Martha had done what Mary was, was doing, no one would be eating, but hey, maybe that was the best thing. Right. But again, he wants us to get in his rhythm. Yes. And sit at his feet, sit in his presence is what we need to do, sit in his presence and hear from him what to do. Yes. And he tells us what to do. He says, don't worry about anything. Philippians 4, 5, and 6. Don't worry about anything, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your request be made known to God. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding, Come all understanding will keep your heart and mind on Christ Jesus. Yes. And just like he said in the Old Testament, Isaiah 26, 3, he will keep him in perfect peace. Can you imagine perfect peace? If it's mind, again, it's that mind, it's that mind that stayed on him because you trust in him. Yes. So we got to get our mind on him. We got to get our speech on him. We got to learn to sit at his feet and get in his rhythm. And when we do, guess what? We win the battle on stress every time. Yes. I appreciate that you took what you learned when mm -hmm. you saw you were stressing yourself out by going and then put it in a book for right. us to learn from that. I was really surprised by this statistic. In your book, you referenced saying the American Institute of Stress says that 75 right. to 90 percent of all visits to a primary care physician's office are stress disorders. Stress related. Stress related. It's all related. related to stress. In other words, realize that about 75 to 90 percent of people going to the doctor would probably not have to go if they would learn to sit at Jesus' feet. Yes. Just get in his rhythm and put their mind on him and their words and speech on him and start speaking the word instead of speaking their problems. Yes, that's and, so good. And we learn how to speak our fears, but we need to simply stop speaking our fears and start prophesying what the word of God says about us. Right. I think also just giving your day to him every day to lead and guide you and what you should be doing exactly. instead of trying to take everything yes, on. Yes, exactly. And entering into that attitude of gratitude or thanksgiving. Now, again, he wants us to have a grateful heart. And this is one of the key things that moves faith and moves God. In the Word of God, it tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, in all things, or another translation says, in every circumstance, in every circumstance, give thanks. Mm -hmm. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So if you want to know the will of God in all things or in every circumstance, give thanks. Right. Have a thankful heart. Have an attitude of gratitude. Because when you do, even though it may not be the best thing that you're in right now, it may be very stressful, he will see you through and he'll give you the answer. Yes. And you will be an overcomer and not a victim. Yeah, it's so good. Kelly, you have anything? I was going to say, boy, we can attest to that. We can't we do it <laughs> But Dr. Yeah. Colbert, what, what if we don't? What's ahead for us, uh, not just as a society, but as individuals? What's ahead physically, emotionally, mentally, if we don't do what you're talking about today? Anxiety, depression, fatigue, loss of sleep, 
And like I say, most of these medical problems that people see, 75 to 90 percent, are for stress-related disorders because it robs us of our peace. It causes our stress response to get stuck so that we don't uh, sleep well. Mm -hmm. As a result, we get fatigued, we get brain fog, we get um, loss of energy. And one of the key things that we need to do is practice margin. Now you say, what's margin? Yeah, margarine? what does that mean? Well, it's not margarine or, or butter. <laughs> margin is simply breathing room. Mm -hmm. It's that space between vitality and exhaustion, just like me. I used to have no margin. I would see patients every 15, 20 minutes. And if someone took longer, then it, I'd get out maybe at seven or eight o'clock at night because I had no margin. Mm -hmm. Margin, for example, is like if you're flying from Orlando to LA and you go through Dallas, if you only give yourself 30 minutes to catch the connect flight, that's not enough margin. Right. You will not make your flight, especially if you're sitting in the back. And so it's that breathing room and we all need that margin. And I uh, talk about this in the book on how to control stress. In other words, you're getting into God's rhythm. You're not doing too many things. You're not a human doing. And also you practice mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness is simply enjoying the present moment. Most everyone that's stu stuck in anxiety and fear is worrying about the past or worrying or about the future. The future. Yeah. They're not living the present moment. They're not enjoying the present moment where we spend so much time with our grandchildren and just enjoy them and play with them and mm -hmm. just have a good time. I'm not worrying about the past or the, or the future. I'm simply thinking about the present moment, focusing on that and enjoying the present moment. Well, Matthew, the book of Matthew tells us right. that, that exactly. we're to Look be, at the birds and the air. And today, focus right, on sure. today. Exactly. And a so, lot of people are just stressed out about tomorrow. Exactly right. So again, the Word of God in this book is simply using the Word and giving the scientific validation behind the Word. But God knew this thousands of years ago when the Word was written. Yes. And so he, if we just practice these principles, we will live a stress-free life. Now, what's interesting, the most, the three most, I just looked this up, the three most common cause of stress today mm -hmm. in 2020 is money money. And a lot of people are needing more money or they're out of work. Number two is job, job mm -hmm. issues. And number three, okay, number three is going to be health concerns. Mm. And again, COVID concerns, or it could be, again, it could be people are having problems with autoimmune disease, like psoriasis, like Kelly was saying, or it could be other health concerns. It could be heart disease. It could be cancer. It could be dementia. Mm -hmm. It could be a whole host of health problems. And so, again, these are the main causes of stress that we're seeing in this country. And those three you mentioned are wrapped in fear. Oh, my goodness, yes. I mean, that's fear-based when you're focusing. How important are our thoughts? Oh, the thoughts are critical. And I have a whole chapter on thoughts. Awesome. Because unless we start to capture our thoughts and cast down those thoughts, cast down imaginations, yes. which are thoughts and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every, not some, every, every thought. thought into captivity according to the obedience of Christ. And yes. again, we got to filter these thoughts th through. And whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, if there be anything of virtue or praiseworthy, we're told to think on these things. So we take it through the filter. Well, you're listening to the news. Well, is it, is it, uh, is it true? Well, you, well, I don't know. Most news is false now. So mm -hmm. boom, you turn it. Is it honest? No, it's not honest. Turn it off. Mm -hmm. Is it just? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it a good report? Well, no, it's a terrible report. Right. Turn it off. Right. Don't let it in your mind. You spew it out. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is it uh, is it a virtue or is it praise? Is it worthy of praise? Well, no. Mm -hmm. Well, turn it off. Too many people are spending too much time listening to the news and yes. they need to listen to the Good news. Exactly. Not the pick bad up, news. Pick up yes. that word. Pick up the word of God. Listen to the good news, especially at bedtime. Yes. And what I do, I love to listen to the word at night on tape going to bed. I have it right next to my bed. I'll turn that on. I love the New Living Translation. Sometimes I'll listen to um, you know, Earl Jones, you know, the mm -hmm. great voice. He's got that wonderful voice. That's King James, which I don't like as much, but I love his voice, mm -hmm. James Earl Jones. Yeah. And so, again, it's listening to that word, it's focusing on the word, and then it's just letting the word reign in your heart it and calms, in your mind. Exactly. You. Yes. Remember when Jesus was in the boat 
and the storm came up. He's the perfect example. Exactly. Because look what he did. Now here are the disciples freaking out. Yeah. They were about to sink. Here's that boat. The water's washing over it. The storm is like a hurricane and out he's there. Sleeping. And he's sound asleep. So sleep sleeping so soundly, they had to shake him and wake him up. And then yeah. he immediately rebuked the storm and then he and and then again he quieted the storm and then the boat was able to go right to the other side. But Again, why didn't they trust him? Why yes. didn't they trust? He wants us to be in that perfect peace. peace. If he puts a condition, if our mind is stayed on him because we trust in him and we're not trusting him and our mind's not staying on him. Our mind's on the news, the bad yes. news. Let's put our mind on the good news. The other day I was watching some of this political stuff that's on the news. I don't watch the news that often, but I felt my heart. Yeah. Starting to race. Right, right, right. Because Ooh. of the division I was exactly. seeing exactly. on TV. And I said, Jerry, good. turn it off. Good. good. Like I could Very physically good. feel my body reacting Praise to God. this you fighting right. and Amen. feuding. I'm Amen. like, I don't have to sit and watch. You this. don't have. And that's what I tell Christian to do, or else you're going to get stuck in worry and anxiety and fear and depression. Yes. And you're then signing up for autoimmune disease or you're signing up for depression or you're signing up for chronic fatigue or insomnia. I used to suffer from insomnia yes. because I'd listen to the bad news. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to turn it off and turn on the good news, guess what? It puts you in that good, deep, sound sleep. Yes. Kelly, you have something? So, Dr. Colbert. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Colbert, speaking of politics, how yes. much of a factor is offense? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good segue. Oh, what my about goodness. Offense? Offense. And, and what can we do right. about it? It's got to be a factor in all this. You talk about that in your book. Absolutely. Well, again, when people are offended, they walk in unforgiveness. And when you walk in unforgiveness, you just tie God's hands mm -hmm. and you're not going to walk in love. It's, not, it's impossible to work, walk the love walk. So it's impossible, it's impossible to walk the love walk. It's impossible to stay in faith. Mm -hmm. Because remember, after Jesus spoke the most powerful scriptures on faith in Mark eleven twenty three and 24, he then says, but uh, if you have aught or anything against anyone, he says, forgive them so that your father who's in heaven will also People forgive you. forget verse 25 often. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so again, realize the love and walking free of offense because love is not offended. It, it says it says it keeps no record of wrong. So many Christians have a big, huge, like an uh, encyclopedia or like a New York phone book full of offense. Yes. They did me wrong. She did me wrong. He did me wrong. And we walking around with that in there. And that creates stress and that invites disease into your body. Yes. We have to forgive. And that's why the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught us to pray uh, and one of the major conditions in prayer is forgive. If you have anything against anyone, you forgive them. Yes, that's huge. Dr. Colbert, I was with someone on their last breath. They were dying. Right. But I knew they had offense. Right, right. And I knew it was huge sure. to address that before they passed. I got to see firsthand watch that offense go. Amen. I saw it be wow. lifted from them. And then moments exactly. later, Praise they God. went. To heaven. Praise God. But I didn't want them because Good of that first you. 25. Absolutely is huge. right. Absolutely and right. And people don't realize how important that is. And that's part of the love walk. And if you don't have uh, love, again, that the, uh, that is the propulsion that propels faith. Your faith becomes ineffectual. Yes. It's that simple. Yes. Kelly, faith what works were you by love. say? Yes. Well, I was just going to say that I think as humans, we we have this propensity for drama that we get involved in everybody else's stressful situations and we take on their offenses. Mm -hmm. Even somebody that we don't know, or we see them on the news right. and we get upset about second, this or we get upset about somebody offense. at work. <laughs> That's good. I like Our, it. What'd you say, Jay? Second hand offense. Second hand yeah, but, but does our do our bodies know the difference if we're stressing over somebody else's story or ours? It still creates the stress response, the high cortisol levels, the high adrenaline, stress the blood pressure, stress. stress is stress. Yeah. And too much stress, stress that is not turned off, that becomes offensive, chronic, unrelenting stress that starts to invite disease into your body. So the, the way our body's designed, if we are stressed, it's supposed to be short lived in order to enable us to escape from an attack 
or uh, escape from an accident or mm -hmm. whatever. And but chronic unrelenting stress that doesn't turn off is dangerous to our health because these powerful hormones sent to meant to save our life start to destroy our life and inviting disease in because we're not meant to carry stress long term, just short little bursts of stress. And right. that's and then it's supposed to turn off yeah. and we're supposed to be walking in peace. But there's people living. They're living it. Stressed why, out every day. That's why we see so much high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That's why we see so much heart disease. That's why we see so much fatigue and brain fog and accelerated aging and yes. autoimmune diseases. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Amen. Would you challenge our viewer today and pray over them? Sure. Absolutely. Praise God. Well, if you've had lots of stress and you want to enter into God's rhythm and you want to experience the peace of God that passes all understanding, let's just take this to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for your word. And Father, if so many people, some of your children are full of offense, Father, just help them release that offense. It's not worth dying for. Yes. Just say, it's okay. I forgive them. And Father, I'm going to refuse to hold unforgiveness toward them. Now, Father, fill me with your peace, fill me with your love, and fill me with your joy. Now, if you pray that, and, and you meant it, the peace of God will start to reign in your life, yes. and you'll start to become immune to the effects of stress. But now you've got to practice gratitude. But now you've got to uh, examine your heart. You've got to say, am I living in God's rhythm? Or am I stressed? Are my hands tight? Are my shoulders tight? Do a stress uh, analysis real quick. If you're harboring stress, your muscles are going to be tight. Your hands are going to be clenched. Your shoulders up. Your buttocks tight. Just enter that peace. Take a deep breath and just release all of that offense toward. Now, you may have to do it toward different people. One may not be enough. You may have harbored unforgiveness toward your son or daughter or mother or father or son-in-law, daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, father-in-law, whoever. Let it go. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's uh, a friend, a best friend, or someone who betrayed you, someone who deceived you, someone who hurt you. It's not worth dying for. Let it go yes. and enter the peace of God and in, let the peace of God reign in your heart. That's so good. Thank you so much oh, for sure. being here. Absolutely. It has been such a blessing. I'm going to read these books that okay. you've given Great. us. Thanks I appreciate God. it. Kelly, you have any last words? Thank you for being with us, Dr. Colbert. Sure. We appreciate you so much. And personally, I just appreciate the things that you gave us that are practical and spiritual to be able to kick this thing out of our lives once and for all, stress and sickness and disease. Yes. Praise I want to God. read this to you real quick before we go. It says, pour out all your worries and stress upon him. And here's Amen. the key. Leave them there. Amen. Leave them there because he tenderly cares about you. He tenderly cares about you. So don't stress out anymore. Give it to him and do what you need to do to get rid of the stress today. We'll see you again next week at the Beach House.